Okay, so in my video where I explained how to set up um, your base settings on your carburetor, I made the carnal sin of mentioning ignition timing, and specifically I kind of um, somewhat discussed your uh, um, initial timing settings. Now, um, because of this, and since your vacuum advance factors into this, I feel obligated to go over it so I don't leave anything unchecked here in this topic. So um, there's a big debate between manifold vacuum and ported vacuum. And, uh, you know, people have gone back and forth for a long time. Now, um, you know, the only difference between ported vacuum and manifold vacuum is ported vacuum is not pulling in timing at idle, where manifold vacuum is pulling in timing from your vacuum advance canister at idle. And a little bit on a vacuum advance canister, uh, it'll generally have a setting like 15 inches of vacuum or so, where uh, once your engine arp or your manifold vacuum drops below that, you're only running your mechanical timing. Um, and that's what you want to set your carburetor up for, is that mechanical timing. That's your least forgiving um, situations with your carbureted engine. But, uh, you know, when you're at um, higher RPM, you know, or just cruising speeds, you're making good manifold vacuum, your engine's moving quicker, your throttle blades are fairly closed, you know, you're hitting somewhere between 15 to, you know, 22 inches of vacuum, I would hope, on your engine. So in those cases, um, when there's very light load on your engine is when that vacuum canister is adding timing. And it'll usually, a stock canister will um, usually add 15 degrees of timing and it'll uh, um, only work when your engine's running at 15 inches of vacuum or above. So anyway, getting back to our ported versus manifold vacuum, um, like we said, your ported vacuum's not pulling in timing at idle. And a little bit about your history about your ported vacuum is it didn't exist until the mid 60s to late 70s. And uh, before then, everything was manifold vacuum. And uh, it was a very poor attempt at um, an emission setting for carburetors because what it does when it pulls timing and your idle mixture is relatively leaner, um, what this causes is uh, your exhaust temperatures to go up and that would burn off a lot of your carbons. And so, you know, it was kind of an emissions band-aid of the time. And um, we'll get in a little bit later on why they still exist and why they're still on carburetors. Um, it's still somewhat of a band-aid for ignition timing today. Now, I personally like to run manifold vacuum. Um, there is a place for ported vacuum. And, uh, you know, that's if you have more of a big radical cammed engine, you know, that's uh, at idle, it can't hold a steady vacuum. It's bouncing below between like four to six inches of vacuum or something of that nature. Um, where that's even so low, they don't make adjustable vacuum advance canisters for <laughs> that low of engine vacuum. But if your engine vacuum is bouncing at all, um, that's going to be pulling timing in and out uh, if you're off manifold vacuum. So in those cases, you can't. But in most cases, if your engine is set up properly, you should not have, um, you know, a bouncing um, manifold vacuum reading. You should be able to run your distributor vacuum advance off manifold vacuum. So, and that's that's what I have set up on all my cars. It works absolutely great. Um, and like I said, a lot of the reason people can't do this is because they don't have an adjustable vacuum advance canister. And so, um, you know, it's putting in too much timing. If you set your timing to 15 degrees, in that stock canister is putting in another 15 degrees, you're idling at 30 degrees of timing, and that's just way too much timing. So ideally, you wanna be somewhere between 18 to 23 inches of vacuum, or I mean, excuse me, 18 to 20 degrees of timing. Um, I found that to just be the best. Engines run the best with that. Um, naturally, you set your mechanical timing to what your carburetor desires, you know. We went through that in that other video, but, um, you know, from there you want an adjustable vacuum advance canister that pulls in the right amount of timing um, at the right engine vacuum to where you can get 
right in between where you want to be with uh, between 18 to 23, 24 inches. Any more than that, and that's just uh, way too much for idle. Um, so um, anyway, that's kind of uh, my overview of ported versus manifold vacuum. If you don't have an adjustable vacuum advance canister and you want to band-aid it, you can run ported. That's fine, but you'll get better performance off running manifold vacuum with that adjustable vacuum advance canister. But uh, anyway, I wanted to touch on that because I mentioned that with your um, setting your base idle system of your carburetor. So anyway, I hope that was um, relatively enlightening and shed some um, light on, I guess, uh, kind of how that system works with your carburetor.